well on that note on that very very convenient segue we're going to have a look at this month's festival playlist so i'm going to hand it back over to mike who's going to walk you through every single season of content you've got coming up cool yeah let's take a look we could just uh, bring up that slide there we go. Okay, so the top level rewards for completion of Festival Playlist at 50%, you can get yourself an Armour H1, and at 80%, you can get the McLaren F1. So there's some really nice high value rewards there, but that's not all. Um, for 50% in summer, you can get yourself a brand new car. That is the Formula Drift uh, Corvette, which we'll be taking a look at in a little while. Moving on from that, we have uh, this Easter-themed content. So we have the Easter Boogie trial event where you can win yourself the rabbit outfit. I know you guys have been desperate to get your hands on that if you missed it last Easter. And also the first uh, showcase remix for this month, which is nine and three quarters. Uh, if we click forward. Yes, not to be missed. You've got Koenigsegg Hunt, uh, which gives you the opportunity to win some rabbit ears. Again, the really, really high value rewards here. Also like an Alfa Romeo TZ2 and a, a Renault 5 Turbo 4 Tradition. But it's the rabbit ears that you guys are here for. I, I know what you guys like. Uh, let's jump forward to Autumn. All right, so 50% uh, in Autumn gets you the Hudson Hornet, as made famous in Pixar's Cars. Uh, also an uh, Aston Martin DBR1 there as well. Uh, clicking forward. You can see we have another showcase remix. That's the second one in this update, Forest Sprite. Um, there's also, uh, I, I know some people on the team will be very proud of this punt. So you've got Silicon Rally, which gives you a chance to win the uh, Peugeot 205 Forza Edition. That's one with that ridiculous wing on the back there. And clicking forward, that's right. Yep. So, yes, another one of our brand new cars to this update is the uh, Mark III Toyota Supra. So, we previously given away the Mark IV. Uh, you'll now have a chance to get the Mark III Supra. That's in the overnight part seasonal event in autumn. Also another chance at that um, United BMW M3 GTS. Skipping on into winter, your 50% reward is the 2018 Mercedes AMG E63S. So again, that's a brand new car. You guys have first chance to get your hands on that. Also the uh, Honda NSXR there at 80%. Clicking forward, we can see another showcase remix of the third one of the month. This time it's the Assault on the Control Room, so a remix of the Halo Showcase. Also a chance to get that uh, Ford Falcon Forza Edition in the trial event just there. And clicking forward again, yep, yeah, just a, a few more awesome cars here. So you can get that Maserati Tipo, the Birdcage, uh, and the Audi TT RS. And jumping on into spring. So you've got the KTM Crossbow GT4 and the Ferrari 599 Evoluzione. And clicking forward, we have uh, another showcase remix. So uh, four showcase remixes. I believe the, four, the first time we've had four in a single update. So that's pretty exciting. And then one more click. That's right. So another brand new car, which is the Formula Drift 599. So this is an awesome car, which we'll be taking a look at in a little bit. So I got an absolutely amazing kit on it. And I can't wait to drive it around the world. So Over to, you, to Charlie. recap. Okay. Some pretty significant things being four brand new remixes, bunny ears, and the cars from car. Well, car from yes. cars. Imagine yes. the S one the other way around of those. And words. we still have a couple more surprises further on in this show as well. So we haven't revealed everything just yet. So but don't Mike, go anywhere. We have a brand new feature to discuss. Some of you guys may already be familiar with it, but it's a new gadget that Horizon fans have coming up. Let's hear all about it, shall we? Yeah, so it's brand new to Forza Horizon 4. People who've play played previous games might have seen it before. Um, an interesting fact, well, at least it's, it's interesting to me uh, personally, is that uh, Horizon Promo uh, was the very, very first feature I worked on when I joined uh, Playground Games whilst we were making Forza Horizon 2. Um, and it's back. Forza Horizon, uh, Forza Horizon 4 will now have Horizon Promo. I am at this point going to hand over to Dave as he has been handling the implementation of Promo in Horizon 4. Yeah, so promo is back. Horizon promo is back. And uh, people who played Horizon 3 will be familiar with the feature, but then uh, those of you who haven't, uh, effectively what it does is it's hard to you with taking pictures of all the cars in Horizon. And the kind of law behind that is that you're taking pictures of uh, all the cars for promotional purposes for the festival. And as you do that, you're going to get loads of rewards thrown at you as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a fan favorite. It's a feature that all of us love in the office. So it's really exciting to see that it's back in for Horizon 4. Um, I've seen this video a here. Promotional shot of a white transit van just there. Uh, perfect. Yes. I'm sure that'll get all the fans <laughs> into uh, the Horizon Festival. Yeah. And, and, and this is kind of the, the flow you'll get. So um, this feature is going to be unlocked when you buy the player house in Ambleside. It's called Sunflower Meadows. 
And if you've already unlocked that, you're going to um, it's going to unlock as soon as you boot the game when the update goes live. But uh, the main flow is you'll be driving around the world and you'll see these icons. You can see one here above the Benino. It's like a photo icon. And that means that you haven't taken a picture of it for your promo collection. So what you want to do is you just kind of want to get close up and close to it. You want to go into photo mode, take a picture, and then just continue to do that. And um, there's some really cool rewards we've got lined up um, for people who engage in this feature. Uh, so here we've got the Zonda R and the Benino together. Cool. So oh, it's not the uh, we can see that, day but... that Tom needs to photograph 14 more cars in order to unlock the princely sum of 15,000 credits. But uh, how much money can he get for taking photos of all of the cars in Horizon Promo? It's funny you should say that, Mike. Thank you. So um, <laughs> just from getting uh, just from credits alone, you're going to earn 730,000 credits. Um, but we've also got wow. eight wheel spins. We've got quick chat lines, and we've also got two new surprises that I think we might be showing just further on in this video. Two new surprises, Dave. We're spo we're spo we've already shown four new cars. Uh, <laughs> two, two more. I'll <laughs> oh, be spoiling so yeah. So yes, they are cars. We have two brand new cars that are new to Forza, and they are the Ferrari Portofino and the Porsche Gunther Works 400R. So some really awesome cars that are really well sought after, brand new to the game, and we're putting them um, in Horizon Promo. What's Tom doing now, Dave? So for people who don't actually like seeing the photo icon above the player labels, you can actually turn that off. Uh, and that's just for people who maybe find it a bit too distracting. Uh, I know I won't be doing this, but for people who do, you can turn it off um, if you want to. But you can still get your progress towards the... Uh, all your rewards as well so um, what we've also done is we've upgraded the car collection screen kind of given a bit of a reboot what we've done is we've added lots of uh we've integrated horizon promo on this screen so you can go to this screen you can see what cars you own what cars you don't own also what cars you captured and what cars you haven't captured and you can filter the screen uh, with those as well so it's a really cool place to see all the cars that you haven't yet got on your promo collection and all the ones that you don't own in one nice little package. So here we're looking at the cars you own, but you haven't photographed. So these are all cars that you could just go and get out of the garage, take a quick photo, and uh, give yourself a little bit of progress into Horizon Promo. Yes. I think we're going to look at the Horizon Live thread. Yes, so Horizon Promo has got its own Horizon Live thread. And as we said, there's lots and lots of rewards in there, uh, mainly the Portofino and the Porsche Gunther Works. So you're going to unlock the Ferrari Portofino when you capture 100 cars, and then the Porsche Gunther Works 400R when you capture 200 cars. And I think we're going to be looking at those in more detail later in the stream. But yes, with quick chat lines, wheel spins, credits, there's lots of stuff here. So it's um, a really cool, really cool feature. So we went through a little bit quick there. I wasn't able to see what the new quick chat lines were. Can you, uh, can you remember what they are, Dave? So we have a few. We've um, let me take a selfie as one of them. The others I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, I'm sorry that I threw you on. I, I know my so favourite one is um, Promo Arigato. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be good. Amazing. Let's see if uh, let's see if Tom's going to take another photo for us. He's not because he's already taken a photo of all these cars, isn't he? <laughs> but what's, what's, what's good to know is that um, because obviously Horizon Life is connected and it's online, you'll be taking photos of real players as well. And that's something that I think is a really cool social element to this uh, feature as well. So, yeah, mm. it's great. Mm, and I can't wait for you guys to, uh, to get involved and see how far you get through with it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been a, a really heavily requested feature. It's one of those things where uh, each new game, uh, we have to take stock of what we had from the previous game, what, we, what we're going to bring forward. It isn't always uh, as simple as you might think to just bring everything across from the old game, and sometimes things have got to uh, end up on the cutting room floor. So it's been really great to be able to get that back in uh, into the game. I know a lot of people have been wanting, wanting it, and, uh, and bring it in with such great rewards as well is just extra cool. And you got to take pictures of 700 cars in order to get them all, so... Sounds like a yeah, pretty so, good feature. So people to shouldn't me. read too much into that number. Uh, don't that that is what it's set to at the moment, but that doesn't mean that that is the uh, total number of cars that we will ever have in the game. That is a number that is uh, flexible, and we can change uh, with a future update if we need to. 
So first up, yes, it is that 2018 Ferrari Portofino. Uh, this one is kind of that entry-level Ferrari, if, if there were such a thing. Uh, it replaces the uh, outgoing uh, Ferrari California and California T models. Uh, as I say, this is an entry-level car, so uh, you can get one of these for around 215 dollars to $250,000, depending on, on options. So, you know, just a, an, ev an everyman's Ferrari. Um, but despite that kind of entry-level tag, it's still an incredibly powerful car, so it's got a 3.9-litre twin-turbo V8, which gets up to 590 horsepower, um, which is an increase of 40 horsepower over the, the aforementioned California T. Uh, it can top out at 199 miles per hour and does not to 60 in three and a half seconds. And frankly, it just looks amazing. It's such a great looking car, such a great improvement, I think, over the uh, over the, the California, which itself was a nice looking car. Um, I think the reason this kind of sits as a, an entry level model is probably because of the other lines that Ferrari has out at the moment. So you have the 488 and the 8, 488 and the 812, um, which are those real like kind of raw supercars. Whereas this one straddles that nice line between being a really, really high end sports car and just tipping into that modern supercar feel. Um, it's uh, you know, an absolutely stunning car. And one of the um, the cool features of it, the cool features, one of the, the features that I find quite interesting is that they didn't want to ruin the lines of the car when you had the roof down like this. So whereas a lot of uh, convertibles will have those kind of metal uh, end-shaped bits of iron that will go behind the seat in order to protect the driver in a crash, this car actually has a feature which isn't simulated in game, but uh, is part of the real car, which is once it detects it, is, it, may, it might be losing control, it's about to, to roll, um, it has a, a, a deployable roll cage that shoots up out of the back of the car to cover the drivers and any passengers and protect them from any incoming damage. Uh, I just think it's a really cool a solve to a, to a problem that would, might affect the visual of the car, but they don't want to obviously uh, sacrifice any safety. So next up, Tom is jumping into the 92 uh, Toyota Supra. So this is the Mark III Supra. Um, there were two Supras before this, but they were before the kind of name change. So there was a it used to be called the Celica Supra, uh, and they were part of the Celica line. It was like the, the GT model of Celica was had that kind of Supra moniker. This was the first car which carried the Supra name on its own, separate from the Celica as its own car line. So it's got a two litre air inline six twin turbo, uh, tops out about 207 horsepower. Um, it's kind of at that era where you may suffer a little bit of turbo lag, so it's not as fast as the car that followed it, the uh, the Mark IV, which uh, regular viewers of this show might remember as revealing outside the front of the office uh, well, by ripping off a sheet. So this is the car that predated that by by a few years. So it's front engine, rear wheel drive, which means it's really well balanced for drift. So if you take it into the garage and throw a few upgrades in there, then it can be a really, really sweet drift car. And of course, uh, it's just another uh, Toyota back in the game. So it's really great for us to be able to bring these cars back. Um, and because of where we are and the time of day in the world at the moment, um, we won't be able to actually see this feature, but it also features pop-up headlights, which adds charm to any car. So, oh, another, another interesting fact about this particular model as well is it was never released outside of Japan. Um, so it was never available in the US or Europe, at least not without import. Uh, and the great thing about that is it means that the steering wheel is on the correct side uh, because Japan, obviously, like like the UK, it drives on the left side of the road, which is to say the correct side of the road. <laughs> correct side of the road. I'll support that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can see, Tom, it's probably not going to have enough of a straight for us to really kind of see that turbo lag when it kicks in because it does have a... At, at stock, it has a bit of a tricky power curve to get the most out of. You really do have to um, get a nice straight so that you can really gun it for a little while, get that turbo spooled up, and then, and then it can really kick into, kick into gear. It sounds nice. I know that's like the, the opinion no one ever asked for, but it sounds very nice too. <laughs> that is a thing that our audience care about a great deal, Charlie. I don't think it is in any way controversial to, to point out <laughs> that it sounds nice. I've, yeah, that, uh, that, um, yeah, the two litre, in, like I say, two litre in line, um, tw twin turbo. And you can, I, 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 if, if Tom had taken it on the motor in this clip, you'd have probably heard it, but you do, you do really hear that turbo uh, spooling up as well uh, as, as it starts to kick in. Yeah, it's a really, really cool car. Um, and I think it's cool, perhaps uh, just for its heritage of where it sits, because it really marks the sort of start of that iconic super line separated out from the Celica. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I always see. had a Celica What's... growing up, you know. There was someone who lived in our street who had a Celica, and I always looked at it and I was like, I'm going to have that one day. I don't, yeah, they're by a really, the way. They're a really great looking car, the Celica. I think there's, um, they're not that expensive if you have to get an old Celica now. There's, uh, Whereas getting a like a Mark IV Supra will set you back at least 50k, you can get an old Celica at for least, probably like yeah. two grand. Anyway, uh, this is the Porsche Gunther Works 400R. Uh, this is a really interesting car, which uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people watching hadn't heard of, just because it's a bit of a curio. Um, but it is built by Vor well, a company that was called Vorsan, it's now calling themselves Gunther Works, uh, who previously used to make uh, aftermarket wheels and body kits and things for cars. They have a, a good pedigree in making uh, luxury car parks. This was their first attempt at making their own car. Uh, I say making their own car, it's quite clearly based on, on somebody else's car. Uh, and <laughs> if you wanted to get your hands on one of these cars, you would need to contact them. Uh, you're probably a bit late now because they only made 25 of them uh, and they're not making any more. But uh, you need to contact them and you have to pay in the region of 525 to sort of 670,000 US dollars. And you would need to donate a Porsche uh, 993 Carrera 2 as the donor car uh, because they would build this on top of that car that you've donated. The really cool thing about this car is the, the 993 Gen of the Porsche 911 never had a GT3 RS line. That didn't start until the Gen after, after this one, the 996. So what Gunther Works wanted to do was think about, well, what would the GT3 RS of the 993 look like? And, and this is it. So it's effectively a, a track spec version of the uh, 993 uh, generation 911. Um, and it's just super cool. So all the body is made out of carbon fiber. It's been really, really stripped down. So it's super, super lightweight. It's got a brand new engine built by Ross Sport Racing. Um, and it's, it's a four liter uh, boxer engine, flat six, naturally aspirated. So it's just this really, really great, really guttural, powerful engine. Um, <laughs> and what I really like about this is, um, is how it's just all about performance, all about track performance. A lot of, um, not a lot, there's a few, a few houses and manufacturers who will take your uh, your classic Porsche, and they'll um, make it super luxurious. A few months ago, we looked at the Emery Special, um, which we had in a previous update. I forget exactly which one it was, but that's where somebody took an old Porsche and Emery Special. Um, they make it super luxurious. They rebuild it out of like really fine luxury parts. So you have like a wooden steering wheel and a, a really beautiful finish and like walnut dash. And every single one of them was supposed to be unique and really personal to the owner. But that was all about luxury. This is all about performance, about being able to take this down to the track and get an incredible like speed out of it. So it's super lightweight, about 1200 kilos. Uh, it's 431 horsepower and it's an absolute joy to drive. I think it's really, really great to get into the game. And I think it's really great to get um, just Gunther works in front of more people because it is a, a, cur a curious car brand and a curious car to exist at all. I mean, they sound really fascinating. I hadn't heard, and this may happen to many other car manufacturers, but the idea of sort of taking a car in plus a, a big fat sum of money and then them turning it into something completely unique. And then th from there, they're only being 25 in the world as well. That's fascinating. Yeah, exactly. They, they really know how to... Um build in that like that scarcity that demand through scarcity by <laughs> just having really huge barriers to entry and then saying i'm only going to do this 25 times yeah, um yeah so despite the very german sounding name uh, they're actually based in california as well so uh, they are they are a us-based company um yeah there's some there's a there's a, there's a really great uh, youtube series where they they take you through the kind of building of one of these where they show them stripping down the original car and rebuilding all the new parts out of carbon fiber uh, definitely worth a look um and yeah it's a, just a really really cool car i'm gonna put that in my watch later queue immediately after this stream that sounds great yeah so that one just for in case anyone forgets was for taking f photographs of 200 cars in uh horizon promo Yeah, so next up we have the 2018 Mercedes AMG E63S. This one, uh, we called out earlier, you can unlock for getting 50% festival players completion in winter. Uh, this car is an absolute beast. Um, depending on what options you pick, you can be, end up paying around $120,000 for one of these. Um, this particular model is the Model S, uh, so it has an extra 30 horsepower, taking it up to 603 horsepower. I imagine that three being kind of important because the equivalent spec, uh, the MW M5, just has 600 horsepower. So I, I, oh, I, I wouldn't want to say there's any uh, any 
like aggressive competition between uh, Mercedes and BMW, but like there, there obviously is. Um, so, <laughs> um, yes, this one can reach 155 uh, miles per hour. It's got 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. It's and, it, and and all of that in what looks like you know a, a, an executive family car that you might just mm. drive down to the golf course or go and take the kids to football practice in. Um, it's. It's named the uh, E63, uh, and that's because it's the uh, successor to the previous line, which was also called the E63, which was named that because it had a 6.3 liter engine. Uh, this one actually doesn't have a 6.3 liter engine. It has a four liter twin turbo V8, so it's a slightly smaller engine, but making up for that power deficit with the twin turbo there. Um, also kind of interesting about this particular line is that previously AMG cars were always rear wheel drive. They were always manual gears. They were all about uh, like being real drivers, performance cars. Um, whereas this one is actually all as a standard is all wheel drive and it's automatic. Um, and although there are options that allow you to, to tweak that preference, that is the standard, um, how they come with, which just kind of opens up that performance to a lot more people, uh, AMG cars, had a bit of a reputation for being, um, like I say, driver's cars, but also quite challenging to drive for like, a regular person. Uh, a regular person, you might you know, drive an exec executive saloon car like this around. So this one has been made so that like a, a normal person is still able to really get the joy out of just all that power and speed because it's got that all-wheel drive, uh, automatic hand automatic gearbox. So uh, when you when you're looking at the wheels, you can um, you can't see how it's connected to the car at all. There's no visible uh, nuts or bolts or anything. Okay, now uh, move, moving on. Um, this is now this is Tom, who fun. recorded this footage for us earlier, uh, showing off his drift skills in the Formula Drift 599. So, this car is an absolute beast and it's a ridiculous drift monster. So, Tom has helpfully uh, taken it over to Fortune Island to take it down the, uh, the needle climb for us, where all the best drifters in the world go to, to show what they've got. Um, so, yeah, this is based on a 599. It's got a twin centrifugal supercharged 6 litre V12, and it sounds absolutely incredible. It is an Gorgeous. absolutely ridiculous engine. It can reach over 900, 900 horsepower. So originally, this particular car uh, was, was built over in Japan by Daigo Saito, who was the first driver to ever win both uh, Formula Drift and the D1 GP. Uh, he's then since uh, handed it, probably sold it, uh, over to uh, Federico Scarifo, who then reworked it back in Italy into the car that we have today. And he has affectionately nicknamed it the Fiorella. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, so sorry, Italy. Um, so th the thing about this car, which you can't really see here, where it's effectively the only car on screen, is that it's actually massive. Um, the 599 as a, as a base is, is a wide car. It's kind of like the width of a small pickup truck. But well, this wow, version really? adds on those wide arch kits so you can get that extra steering angle and it just dwarfs those other cars that you'll see uh, in Formula Drift. So we think in all of the Sylvia cars, which are, are quite compact, even even a Mustang is, is significantly smaller than this. Um, yeah, and, and it would have initially come with a, uh, a flappy paddle gearbox because it's a uh, it's a modern supercar, but this one's been modified. So, so instead of the uh, the flappy gearbox, it uses a six-speed sequential gearbox instead. Oh, and that's convenient, isn't it? Because that is uh, <laughs> another one of our Formula Drift cars. So I don't quite know how um, how Tom's engineered this, but he is not the only one um, drifting down the needle descent. Let him take a picture. That's right. It is the. Uh, the the uh, Formula Drift Chevy Corvette, which is one of the other cars in this update, which we'll be taking a look at shortly. It's not a bad shot either. I think that's the one thing I've noticed is how easy it is in photo mode to just go, ah, oh, that picture will do, and it's absolutely stunning. <laughs> it's it, it helps that it's a great looking game and it features great looking cars. Um, I think it's, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to uh, cheapen the skill of the four photographers too much, but I do think that it's just a, does a good job of uh, chucking really beautiful things into really beautiful environments um, and therefore allows you to create those really uh, interesting and compelling photos. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely going to help with the uh, Horizon promo, especially when you're putting cars like that into the mix. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> right, well, those